compliments. I almost got my, my hand caught in my pocket. Compliments are one of the big drivers behind men's fragrances. People want scents that get them noticed in a positive light. Negative light, no thanks. I don't want people to think I smell like cow butt. Some of you out there do, but that's a personal choice. I support that. You wanna smell like cow booty? Cool. Everybody knows about the big compliment pullers as well, right? Everybody knows about Dior Sauvage, Yves Saint Laurent Y, Bleu de Chanel, Versace Eros. Everybody knows these. So if you have a friend that comes up to you and they say, I would like a compliment fragrance, please, then uh, those are gonna be some of the first ones that you throw at their face. They smell good. I mean, that's that's why people buy them. I'm not saying they smell bad. I'm not saying that. Forgot to introduce myself. Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Today we're talking about fragrances that will get you the positive attention, give you the compliments, but that nobody out there is wearing for one reason or another. When I say one reason or another, really the reason is just because they're they're not as well known. They don't really sell, they don't really sell that much. So when I say one reason or another, that's what I mean. It's actually just that one reason, not another. But even though these are not huge sellers and not always from big well-known names, they do get the job done and often at a much lower price point. So that's a win-win. I'll have these linked down here in the description in case you wanna check them out, feel free. And uh, as always, here are a bunch of codes. The newest being GS25, which is good for buy one, get one 25% off at fragflex.com. You wanna, you wanna jump into fragrance? Okay, let's do it. All right, I'm gonna kick things off with this Halloween man shot. What a name. So this is gonna be a fragrance that uh, a lot of fragrance people know about. You know, people that are into fragrances, they're gonna go, oh yeah, Halloween man, Halloween man, so I, I know that. Uh, your average person, uh, this makes no sense. Halloween man shot. Like if they've never heard of that and you say, that's, that's a good fragrance, you should check it out. Uh, they're probably not gonna trust you, to be honest. They're gonna question your, your faculties. And yet, this stuff smells pretty freaking awesome. Really cheap. You can pick this up from discounters under 30 bucks. Has a, a little similarity to uh, Mont Blanc Legend Night, but I think this actually smells a bit better. Also has a little better performance than Legend Night for me. The opening here smells awesome. It smells really, 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 really nice. It's got this sparkly, effervescent, sweet spiciness. Uh, daiquiri is one of the official notes here off the top. So it's got this like carbonated boozy sweetness mixing with spices. Really super appealing. Smells so much better than you would expect from a fragrance called Halloween Man Shot that cost under 30 bucks. And as an added little bonus, this is larger than your average bottle size. This is not 100 mils. No, no sir, this is 4.2 ounces which is 125 milliliters. So you get 25% more than your average bottle size. Nice. Great for fall and winter time, really nice for a date or the evening or really just any time you want some positive attention. And I will say, if you do not know anything about Halloween fragrances, Halloween Man Shot, very good. Halloween Man X, if you want something that has a good amount of coffee, that one is worth checking out. The original Halloween Man, which comes in a purple bottle, uh, that one smells similar to Paco Rabanne's One Million. And then Halloween Man Hero is an affordable, cheap blue fragrance. So those four are worth knowing about. I haven't tried the new one yet, Halloween Man Mystery. I'll get it eventually. Can't find this stuff. This one's not one of the official 10 in the list, but I do wanna do a little shameless self-promotion and say West Loop, my new fragrance that I creatively directed, is also amazing for compliments. This thing will get you attention all fall and winter long. Really nice, sweet, super appealing, has a toasted cinnamon note there off the top that people go crazy for. So West Loop, yeah. I'm biased, like I said, I creatively directed this stuff, but still. Every Perfumania, every fragrance outlet store in the United States, you can go into them, they'll have it, or you can check it out at Michael Mowell's website, linked down below. Let's keep it going. Up next, I got Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. Love the bottle, I think it looks sick. Like bamboo that's been <laughs> sliced. Reminds me of uh, Ushido Blade, the old PlayStation 1 game. Dating myself again. Back in my day, I played PlayStation 1. We had Samurai, it was fun. So this is a really nice high quality scent. Makes use of leather with aquatic notes. And um, it's done by the same perfumer, Quentin Bish, that did Ganymede. Some people find a similarity between this one and Ganymede. I don't think they're, they're really that close, but you could maybe find like a little bit of that minerality 
from Ganymede in here. It has a little bit of sweetness in there. It's a really elegant, but at the same time, sexy and unique aquatic scent. Kenzo is a brand that in general has some really cool stuff that does stand out a bit that really does not get purchased in the same way uh, that stuff from you know Versace, Armani, uh, Dior, Yves Saint Laurent, Chanel, all the big dogs do. So Kenzo, you should be aware of, and I'm actually gonna talk about another Kenzo here in a little bit, but this one right here, if you want a really unique aquatic, is worth knowing about. All right, now uh, I'm gonna go back on myself a little bit here. The next one is from Yves Saint Laurent. It is YSL's Loam Le Parfum. Now I know I talked about YSL a few times already, you know, poking fun, everybody's wearing YSL. When I'm saying that, I'm talking mainly about why. This one, Lhomme Le Parfum, not really a bestseller. And yet, if you are after a compliment puller, a versatile Frey Gras, this one is that. It has a nice, fresh, clean vibe to it, and it does actually smell a little bit reminiscent of taking uh, YSL's Lhomme Eau de Toilette and mixing it with a bit of that YSL Y DNA. So sort of like take those two and put it into a blender and you get this. That said, it's not just all sweet on top of sweet. It's got some nice aromatic facets to it as well. So you have a good freshness off the top, you know, a little bit of that green aromatic flair to it and a sweetness that kind of carries over from the opening into the mid without being overwhelming. Super easy to wear, super versatile. It's that type of fragrance that, you know, is a Swiss army knife and it pulls compliments everywhere you go. So this is one that you could get if you want something from a really well-known house, but you don't want one of the, you know, absolute top bestsellers that everybody has from said house. Next one is crazy cheap. It is from Carl Lagerfeld. <laughs> I said that really weird. And this is New York Mercer Street. So with this one, you're looking at low $20 at discounters, uh, 22, 23, somewhere around there. And for that price point, it is a great bang for your buck. You got a lot of citrus off the top there, lime being the most prominent citrus note. Then you have rhubarb as well, which gives you a, a nice tartness. Really clean, sweet, fresh, uh, vaguely reminiscent of something like Aqua de Jo. Not as floral as Aqua de Jo. Uh, this one a little bit greener, a little more aromatic than that one, but still kind of in that, in that wheelhouse, in that family, in that style. And like Aqua de Jo, a people pleaser, you know, an easy wear in summertime scent or spring, really good for daytime use, good for the office. And for, again, about 20 bucks, it's a no brainer. Lagerfeld does have a lot of scents actually that are really affordable, that are quite nice, but they, they also have some fragrances that are sewer water for, for a cheap price. So don't just blindly buy everything from Carl Lagerfeld, but do be aware that they've got a lot of hidden gems. Let's go to the mall next with Abercrombie and Fitch, First Instinct, together. Abercrombie, yeah, the house known for fierce. And, and also, yeah, just pretty much fierce. Yeah, fierce. But Abercrombie actually has a lot of other fragrances that are really nice, very well done. First Instinct, in general, the line, really solid because at discounters, they're very inexpensive. As of this video, you can find this one for about $21, so. Yeah, practically free, if free were $21. This one is another one, obviously you can tell by the look of the bottle, that is fresh, sweet, has a similarity to Invictus Aqua. This one's gonna appeal to anybody looking for something with a really pleasant fruity sweetness off the top. You got citrus in there, apple, pineapple. Then you have lavender and musk as it dries down, keeping it really clean masculine, easy wearing. Spring, summertime, daytime, that is a steal for $20. And First Instinct, again, in general, the entire line flies completely under the radar. So I would say this one you need to know about, also the original First Instinct is worth knowing about, and First Instinct Extreme. There is also First Instinct Blue, which may appeal to a lot of you out there, but I think that the other three uh, would be a better place to start. All right, let's go back to Kenzo Aqua. Kenzo Aqua, I like this one. I bring this up as often as I can. This one has gotten a little bit of hate. You know, when it first came out, it, it caught some hate, caught some strays. I feel like the main reason behind that is the marketing is stupid. <laughs> like it's, it's legitimately just, Derpy, but that's not the fragrance's fault, at least the fragrance on the inside of the bottle, right? So I have to really drive this home each time I talk about this because most people have not smelled 
Kenzo Aqua, but you know, the name is Aqua. That puts a pretty clear picture in your mind as to what this should be. Look at the bottle, blue, wavy, you know, looks like the ocean, right? This is not really an aquatic fragrance. So all of the imagery about this, all of the write-ups about this, the friggin' name, none of it really makes a huge amount of sense, at least once you smell the fragrance. Because is it an aquatic scent? No, no, not really. Technically, I think there's a marine note in there, an aquatic note, a sea note, a water note, whatever you want to call it, but this actually smells closer to uh, One Million Lucky. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see too many people out there smelling One Million Lucky and going, oh, wow, what a fantastic aquatic scent. Wow, reminds me of the ocean. Because this makes use of hazelnut, good amount of it, and tonka. Uh, again, it has a little bit of that uh, aquatic feel to it, but it's not an aquatic scent. And you also have spices in here as well, from the opening to the mid. And then woods and vanilla <laughs> in the base as well. So yeah, it's, it's kind of reminiscent of uh, One Million uh, Lucky. So it's kind of like that, you know, fresh meets um, deeper, richer, heavier notes. It works really well. Uh, off my skin, this has always been great. People love it. And it's it's not very expensive. It's like $35 from discounters. So with this one, just don't let the name fool you. It's not really aquatic aquatic. It's not as fresh as you might expect. But as long as you know that going in, you won't be surprised. And then you won't be let down. Follow that up with this guy, Polo Blue Gold Blend from Ralph Lauren. Now this has a uh, blue fragrance vibes, blue fragrance versatility, blue fragrance usage, blue fragrance compliment factor. I really like Gold Blend. I think it's one of the best in the Polo Blue lineup because this one has a bit of like an elegant edge to it, a little classiness to it. I am uh, somebody who doesn't really like the original Polo Blue Eau de Toilette. I think it, it's kind of, Crappy, can I, can, I, can I say that's pretty crappy? I know there's gonna be some people out there who get really offended by that because Polo Blue Eau de Toilette is like classic for a lot of people, but God, it's ugh. Just when the uh, cucumber hits me in the face, that sounds weird. When the cucumber smacks my face, I don't like that. No thank you, get that cuke out of here, man. Get that cuke out of my face! This one just way more pleasant off the top. You've got citrus in there, ginger, melon as well, so it gives you a, a unique kind of sweetness that still smells at the same time familiar if you are uh, accustomed to a lot of the big blue fragrances that have come out over the past billion years. The incense here, along with some of those more herbal notes as it heads through the mid, really helps elevate this. I think it smells super classy, really easy to wear during the day or the evening, and frankly, you can pull this off year round. So it's a really wonderful scent in the Polo Blue lineup, and if you want a blue fragrance, that can get the job done like the big blue fragrances that isn't the big blue fragrances. Check out that, that big blue fragrance right there. Let's follow that one up with this one, Ferragamo's Intense Leather. Really nice presentation on this. You got the, the leather kind of feel, the leatherette from the front of the bottle all the way up to the cap. It looks nice, feels nice, feels classy, feels expensive. And from discounters, it's not too expensive. So that's, that's another win. People who don't know any better are like, oh, how much is that? And you just tell them the retail price. I paid full retail for this. I did not get this from a discounter, no sir. Now, while this does have leather and also earthy notes, don't be scared away by that because it's still really easy wearing leather. It's not, you know, super dirty or anything like that. It has a really appealing opening with apple in there as well as citrus. You've got a little touch of iris as well. Adds like a smooth, almost like suede edge to the scent in the opening in the mid. Nice, almost uh, lightly powdery floating sweetness over the top, heads through the mid as well. It's really well done. Uh, very easy to wear, as I said, and nice performance. Completely overlooked. Ferragamo, uh, I don't wanna say they've fallen off per se, but they're not like uh, really a huge player compared to the, the big names in the fragrance world. They keep coming out with good stuff, nice quality stuff. Uh, actually, I think that this line just keeps getting better and better, but as far as in the US anyway, sales, uh, they, they don't move product like the bigger names, which means far fewer people wear them, which means they come across more unique, even though they are just as versatile as a, a lot of those big name fragrances are. It's funny, I'm like, I'm talk, talking about Ferragamo like it's not a big name, it's a huge name. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's not, it's not Armani in the US, right? Again, talking fragrances, not talking leather goods. Let's not get all... <laughs> Next one is kind of weird, kind of weird. 
And uh, I would say for me personally, not as big of a compliment puller as most of these other ones, but I have heard from people over the years who swear, swear by this one and this line. So I'm including it. Alien Man Mirage from Mugler. <laughs> Mugler is just, okay. Well, I was talking about Ferragamo maybe falling off a little bit. Mugler, <laughs> they haven't fallen off. They have ceased to exist. They have been snapped into the shadow realm. Like, please come back. Mugler fragrances, I miss you. Please come back, please. I'm not gonna rant and rave here, but for those of us uh, who have, you know, been into fragrances for a while, Mugler really stood for something uh, at one point in time for both men's and women's fragrances, but for, for men's, man, it was, Oh, what a time. The Amen line was just, it was something else. Every year it was like, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what the new one's gonna be. Now it's like, I can't wait. Oh wait, it doesn't exist. Oh. And they came out with Alien Man, which was supposed to be like this, this huge deal, this huge thing. And it's just, oh, I don't know if you could flop harder. So I'm just like really giving a rousing, uh, rousing approval to this one. Yeah, it's just, it flopped harder than any freaking fragrance I've ever seen in my life, guy. It just flopped right on its face there. So this is the, uh, the last in the line, uh, at least so far, but you know, there's not been a new one in going on four years now. So I don't anticipate that there's gonna be too many more. Now, the original Alien Man and also Alien Man Fusion uh, I'm not super keen on, but I do think out of the line, the three fragrances, this is the best one, the easiest one to wear and the best compliment puller also. It's an aquatic scent that has a nice, sweet minerality to it. A little bit of an aromatic feel from Juniper in there and also reeds. So that's like the interesting note for this one, I guess, reeds. Then you have a little leather, a little patchouli in there as it dries down. It's got a nice sweetness from the opening that stays quite a while. Has decent performance for me. The presentation actually looks, I feel like really nice. And the atomizer here is very good. The Amen atomizers were trash, but this, that's good. And this is actually a, an interesting choice as far as being one of those scents that straddles the line, that gives you something a little bit different, a little bit out of the ordinary, but is still easy to wrap your head around. All right, last but not least, Jean-Paul Gaultier's in the Navy. Now, when we're talking Jean-Paul Gaultier, they have a lot of big time compliment pullers. Le Beau, Le Beau Le Parfum, Le Mal Le Parfum, Le Mal Elixir, uh, this one, gets overlooked. And I would also say um, Ultramol, which a lot of you know about that one, huge compliment puller. And uh, Eau Fraiche, if you can find that, Lamal Eau Fraiche. And um, also On Board. In general, they just, they, they, they're they pretty good. They're pretty good at making fragrances that people like. Ooh. Now, if you wanna dumb this one down a little bit, it smells kind of like Versace Eros, if you gave it a more aquatic tinge. So it has mint off the top and that's gonna, help you draw that comparison to Eros. But then it has that wonderful kind of vanilla that you find in a, a lot of Lamal fragrances right here in the opening. So it's like Eros with that mint vanilla with more of a fresh aquatic tinge to it. Really nice and smooth, huge people pleaser, completely overlooked. Some people might think, you know, it's a little bit too simple or it has too much in common with Eros, Eros being extremely popular, but I'm telling you, if you're looking for something spring, summertime that people love, this is awesome. And with that one, we got 10 fragrances here that are way more under the radar than the big dogs. And all of these are great at pulling attention. I wanna thank you guys for hanging with me until the end here. Stay safe out there and let me know in the comments, what are uh, some of your kind of under the radar designers that you go for that work really well for you. Cause there are so many of them out there that, you know, I, I, I can't cover them all. So drop some in the comments. Stay safe guys. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.